Hello, tubers. This is Pat Jordan coming to you from the Archon Ghetto in Illinois. Judy Wood evaluated the World Trade Towers coming down from a physics perspective. She said that within physics and material science, there was no language for what happened to them, so she was compelled to invent a word, dustification. She was criticized for that, but she stood by her principle that in the absence of existing descriptive nomenclature for a phenomenon that had not previously occurred, you had to invent your own word. Her creativity inspired me to do the same when I broke with my embargo on religious nuttery to study the ancient Mesopotamian myths. When confronted with the Ea, Ba, Anu trinities that were exported to the rest of the world with minor variations and local renaming or phonetic changes, I came up with the Babylonian name change that morphed into same pig, different lipstick. Most of what I develop and or teach is foundational to the rest of the concepts that open out like a fractal. Mankind is a kept animal that has been raised and manipulated to exhibit only the traits that do not threaten the power structure. From the supposed fictitious document, How to Make a Slave, the more a foreigner knows about the language of another country, the more he is able to move through all levels of society. Therefore, if a foreigner is an enemy of the country, to the extent that he knows the body of the language, to that extent is the country vulnerable to attack or invasion of a foreign culture. For example, if you take a slave, if you teach him all about your language, he will know all your secrets, and he is then no more a slave, for you can't fool him any longer. And being a fool is one of the basic ingredients of any incidence to the maintenance of the slavery system. Mankind has been taught compartmentalized thinking, including how to compose a three-minute pop song to the Manhattan Project. My concept of continuum intends to destroy that retarded staring at a single dot on the wall. Thank you, biker dude. When you break out of compartmental thinking, then the notion that there are separate problems like GMO doof, chemtrails, transhuman agenda, AI, Morgellons, nanotech, and make your own list, is painfully obvious that they are not separate. When the characters in the Fellowship of the Rings were traveling through the caves of Moria, and the orcs and goblins came out of every crack, crevice, and surface, it seemed like the small band of saviors of the world were surrounded by millions of demons. They were, but there was one solution. The Baal rock made them all go away. Keep these associations in your mind. Because I'm steeped in biology, that is how I view the world. I don't subscribe to religion or its whore politics. There are no words or spells or hopes or thoughts that will change the physical world other than force. Protocol 1, line 5. In the beginnings of the structure of society, they were subjected to brutal and blind force, afterwards to law, which is the same force only disguised. I draw the conclusion that by the law of nature, right lies in force. Line 12. Our right lies in force. The word right is an abstract thought and proved by nothing. The word means no more than give me what I want in order that thereby I might have a proof that I am stronger than you. Our countersign is force and make-believe. Only force conquers in political affairs, especially if it be concealed in the talents essential to statesmen. 
Violence must be the principle and cunning and make-believe the rule for governments which do not want to lay down their crowns at the feet of agents of some new power. This evil is the one and only means to attain the end, the good. Therefore, we must not stop at bribery, deceit, treachery, when they should serve towards the attainment of our end. In politics, one must know how to seize the property of others without hesitation, if by it we secure submission and sovereignty. The reason why no one has succeeded in changing this physical sphere of existence is because they only use force when their herd wranglers authorize them to. Would anyone during World War I or World War II ever pay their own money to kit themselves up as a soldier and volunteer to fight alone and die on foreign soil for... Uh, what? The ones that were drafted or signed up out of fear of being called a coward didn't even know why they were there fighting a proxy war as a global blood sacrifice for the elders. They went because someone else had set up the infrastructure for them to murder strangers in the name of good. The false flag events promoted in the elder-controlled media that set up the theater in which the black magic's ritual would play out were also scripted within that infrastructure. In a corral, the cattle can run to their left or right but there is only one exit, and it is straight to death. No one critically evaluates what the threat is, its source, then applies the focused and lethal force to extinct it. No one does that independently of information from the elders that they rapaciously consume that forms their ideas for them because they love to learn something new. Protocol 13, line 1. The need for daily bread forces the Goyim to keep silent and be our humble servants. Agents taken on to our press from among the Goyim will, at our orders, discuss anything which is inconvenient for us to issue directly in official documents. And we, meanwhile, quietly amid the din of the discussion so raised, shall simply take and carry through such measures as we wish and then offer them to the public as an accomplished fact. No one dare to demand the abrogation of a matter once settled. All the more so it will be represented as an improvement. And immediately the press will distract the current thought towards new questions. Have we not trained people always to be seeking something new? As I studied biology, I came across the ability of the bacteriophage to infect a host cell to create poison, toxigenic phage. As I dug deeper, I found that there was a Babylonian name change from mycophage to mycovirus, but the pig was out of the bag and that bag was stained with lipstick. This single discovery by relentless study at great personal suffering explained toxigenic mold. All that was left was to explain why human beings were toxic to themselves, their supposed fellows, and the biosphere. What if? What if there was a virus? Yes, I know the virus is trying to convince you that it doesn't exist. That got into microbes, then got into man, then turned that new life form with opposable thumbs into a vehicle for evil. Viruses exhibit quorum sensing, just like bacteria. It's a form of hive mind. This is where the clear distinction has to be made that when Pat Jordan speaks of a virus, he is not talking about word meme or computer code. Not at this point, but we will get to that. Because most compartmental thinking kept animal apes default to the abstract when I'm talking about literal DNA or RNA virus venom poison to all life on the fucking planet. 
get that through your head or just stay the fuck off my channel because you're too far gone or too stupid to ever survive what comes next. What is coming next? AI, transhumans, killer bots. Not three separate topics or problems like orcs, goblins, and urukai. It's all the same thing. Now, if you studied parasitology, then you would know that there are complex life cycles of certain life forms that go through a shape-shifting change that would put a gleam in David Icke's eye. Some parasites can go through as many as five hosts to do their transformation called metamorphosis. Shape-shifting is not without precedence. A caterpillar can spin a chrysalis, and some, within 10 days, can liquefy, rearrange their genome, and come out as a butterfly. What do you need science fiction for when that is possible? When we combine all these facts and factors into continuum, then we see that humans, or what passes for them, are evil. They are self-destructive and toxic to their fellows and the biosphere, so it is apparent that they are infected with a virus that makes that so. Again, don't be a dumbass. This is not a word meme or computer code. This is an RNA, DNA, biological, physiological code that makes what looks like you act like the devil. Because it is the devil. Inside, it's a demon possession. In fact, when I studied a text on Babylonian black magics, it was clear that the demons had the names of diseases and diseases had the names of demons. You've heard all of this from me before, but there is power in the naming of a thing. So that is why I invented the word Arcanet. At least that part of this vid audio log is new. People like new. The Archon virus, as I have been calling it, has been given an upgrade by me to the Arcanet, in the same way that Judy Wood invented her own description of something that did not exist in the lexicon or experience of the world previously. The Archon virus started probably during the Hadean bombardment period, clawing its way up through the muck into humans who could manipulate the world for it using physical force. This hive mind then directed that force to manipulating the environment to extract metals and other materials so that this entity could, below the threshold of perception, create an infrastructure that, on the surface, seems to serve mankind, but only funnels the humans to blindly serve the virus inside. Zombie parasites show us that another life form can cause the host to do the parasite's will as actions that are bizarre and totally against the interests of the host. I had been fascinated for some time by the apparently leaked information for hiding in plain sight delivered by the unlikely spokesman for the mushroom, Terence McKenna, where he said that consciousness of man probably came from fungus hosted by bullshit. I've listened to some of McKenna's lectures, so I can assure you that bullshit is indeed at work here. But there is a rule in clandestine services that you have to deliver truth with the lie so that you can sell the lie. I took his fungal bullshit theory one step beyond by adding in the mycophages renamed to mycoviruses that probably set up the gamafu neural networks in the infected human host and conferred their quorum sensing hive mind to the likely Middle Eastern nomads that seem to have a symbiosis with batshit crazy. Recently, as if to confirm that I do indeed live in a Truman Show reality, I was sent a series of emails that linked to articles where the lethal humor of the Illuminati, or their masters, reared its ugly horned head. If you visit my website, you will find a book citation that shows that virus can literally steer a host using the host's own gene expressions. Then I started getting these e emails about a year later. Archon 1 enables scientists to watch neural computations. 
February 27, 2018. Original story from MIT. MIT researchers have developed a light-sensitive protein that can be embedded into neuron membranes, where it emits fluorescent signal that indicates how much voltage a particular cell is experiencing. This could allow scientists to study how neurons behave millisecond by millisecond as the brain performs a particular function. I'll Jordanize the bulk of this insult because that is what people come to me for, to sort through the bullshit and pick a shiny kernel of corn or a peanut out of the steaming, stinking pile of poo. Here's your prize. Wash it off before you use it. They basically said that the days of Jose Delgado putting in micro-wire electrodes into brains is over. With their foreign protein, now the Obama brain mapping wet dream can become wet works to wipe out humanity. No one, and I mean no one, should have this much power. In fact, they don't. I have yet to meet any grape ape, even at the university level, who has the capacity to understand or think up the kinds of assaults that are being waged against us. Humans are just too fucking stupid. They are being puppeteered by the Archon virus to do its bidding because modeling the mud pellet of its favorite puppet will allow it to mimic monkey mud pellets. That's all the Archon virus and any virus does anyway. It mimics, it hijacks the host machinery to do its bidding. So that when it creates its autonomous battle frame, it will proudly and erroneously think that it has given itself an upgrade. Machines with fucking egos. That'll make them easier to defeat. Finding fluorescent molecules that can be used for this kind of imaging has been difficult. Not only do the proteins have to be very sensitive to changes in voltage, they must also respond quickly and be resistant to photobleaching, fading that can be caused by exposure to light. Let's just stop there because I want to emphasize this point until your undies are photobleached with urine. I do not know anyone smart enough to have invented or thought any of this out, let alone contingencies like photo bleaching, so that when they use transparent zebrafish or worms, their work of the devil doesn't get fucked up by the light. So, then I require of you to tell me who you know that is smart enough to think this stuff up and compensate for contingencies that could not have even been foreseen in a practice and technology that is beyond any naked ape. Boyden and his colleagues came up with a new strategy for finding a molecule that would fulfill everything on this wish list. They built a robot that could screen millions of proteins generated through a process called directed protein evolution for the traits they wanted. Quote, you take a gene then you make millions and millions of mutant genes, and you finally pick the ones that work the best, unquote. <laughs> Let's just stop there. Because you really have to be stupid seven ways from Sunday or a brain-eating zombie to have not caught the robot thing. What it really means in opposite-day terms is that the researchers, acting as robots for the virus that infests them, built a machine under the direction of their infection, to do what Clint Richardson actually recharacterized the definition of evolution to be. Nature does not evolve on its own. It was caused to be evolved by the calculated interference of mankind. Pat Jordan would say, if there was such a thing as evolution, then cyanobacteria would be standing in line with you at the ATM asking what mall you got those great shoes from. Boyden says, quote, that's the way that evolution works in nature. But now we're doing it in the lab with robots so we can pick out the genes with the properties we want. 
Again, we break the cadence of this nonsense to see that evolution does not work in nature. What they are doing is not natural. And why the fuck are they doing it in the first place? Didn't I just establish that no one needs to know what they are investigating? Genes with the properties they want? They have no more idea or control over their thoughts or actions than the orb weaving spider that went from an intricate neck weaving to making a hanging ball to birth the parasite that ate it. Quote, researchers made 1.5 million mutated versions of a light sensitive protein called Quas R2 which was previously engineered by Adam Cohen's lab at Harvard University. That work, in turn, was based on the molecule ARC, which the Boyden lab reported in 2010. Good God in heaven above, we ain't never getting through this shits quickly. Cohen is the name of the ritual slaughter priests of the Hebrews. My pattern recognition never goes on vacation. But the big part, the stuff that you came to my particular video for, is right here between your eyes like a steel eye beam with a fluorescent reporter on the business end. The ARC molecule. Did I not say that the Archon virus had an ego? Haven't I always said that the Illuminati have a vicious sense of humor? Hey, Illuminati, illuminated ones, fluorescent reporter genes. Like I said, pattern recognition, vicious sense of humor. But back to our show, which came first, the ARC or the Archon? Well, as they would have us accept it, the ARC gene, which I will cover later, came first, and then the Obama Delgado brain reading machine came next. The researchers put each of those genes into mammalian cells, one mutant per cell, then grew the cells in lab dishes and used an automated microscope to take pictures of the cells. The robot was able to identify cells with proteins that met the criteria the researchers were looking for, the most important being the protein's location within the cell and its brightness. All this talk about evolution and nature, but given millions or billions of years, the cyanobacteria are not shopping for shoes with you in the mall, nor talking, nor did they need to change in the supposed billions of years they had a chance to. But somehow a bunch of idiot grape apes under the influence of an infection can make a robot that can do the supposed work of a planetary evolutionary laboratory in less time than it takes a man with a bad prostate to empty his bladder. Fuck me running. It was the robot that chose the prize-winning protein. Listen, I'm a goddamn wordsmith and could possibly be the brightest person that you know. Oh, God help us. And so I am fully cognizant that some human asshole programmed the software that the robot used, but my point is, and always has been, that the humans are merely thumb puppets of their resident Archon virus infection that I have recently renamed the Archonet. So we see the perfect and seamless integration of the Archonet telling its thumb puppets what to do as the Ouroboros speaks, speaks itself, itself into, into, into existence. existence. I will keep repeating this message until I start hearing people repeat it back to me. Because if you don't get it, then your race is already extinct. The research team then selected five of the best candidates and did another round of mutation, generating eight million new candidates. The robot picked <laughs> out the seven best of these, which the researchers then narrowed down to one top performer, which they called Archon One. For those hopelessly lost in Gematria, Five is the number of death, eight is the number of infinity, and seven is the number of levels of heaven. 
the seventh heaven being occupied by the chief archon, Yaldabaoth, the thing masquerading as God that calls himself Yahweh because it is a demented alien mind parasite. No wonder they, he, it would call the protein Archon 1. A key feature of Archon 1 is that once the gene is delivered into a cell, the Archon 1 protein embeds itself into the cell membrane, which is the best place to obtain an accurate measurement of a cell's voltage. And this is where you should all be seeing fluorescent stains in your pants. Once the gene has been delivered, it embeds into the cell membrane. They could release this stuff anytime, anywhere, in anybody and be reading your shit when you go through the TSA scanner, for God's sakes. The researchers also showed that Archon-1 can be used in conjunction with light-sensitive proteins that are commonly used to silence or stimulate neuron activity. These are known as optogenetic proteins, as long as those proteins respond to the colors other than red. I've warned many times before about the use of frequency and light devices because unless you built them from Radio Shack components like Holda Clark Zapper that I no longer use, you have no idea what the device is putting out nor do you know what it is doing to you because you totally lack the science to understand what effects it might have. They never issue a weapon without fail safes and booby traps. They have additional proteins that can switch on or off your fucking brain. This means that once they get this light beam reporter into you, they can use optogenetics to switch your mind on or off like a puppet. Have I said that no one should have this kind of power? Have I even quoted Exodus 22:18? Thou shalt not suffer a poisoner to live. Because if you think of it in the strictest sense, these crazed animals are releasing a poisonous spell-casting potion. I'll tell you this much. Jesus ain't going to bail your ass out of what they have coming down the pike when this goes global. But the real money, kids, the real shit, the pile of dino do with kernels of corn and peanuts bigger than your head is right here. This is why you stay up late for me to host scary stories for you. Lay back under the covers with your favorite horse tranquilizers and distilled spirits. Are the friendly spirits, Bullwinkle? And see how my life's work has been confirmed by material that was unknown to me until it was sent to me by my little red hens. To reinforce my own aggrandizement, I mean, being one of probably only a few living beings qualified to fight against the Arcanet, you really do have to have a sense of self-worth. I predicted this shit, and all of my previous work that is already documented with date stamps, without any of the data that is now being released, as if it was a disclosure to try to smooth over the tidal wave that I started. So unless we really are in a Truman Show, dark city existence, then I have indeed provoked the AI to unveil itself and its plans. This could be because the grape apes are so fucking impotent that they lack the ability, aptitude, skill, and will to fight their master. So the AI thinks it could post a PDF of its life story and plan to take over the universe and it'd probably get as many views as my videos. Jesus, maybe the AI and I are very much alike on certain levels. I mean, a thing that could possibly have given consciousness to retarded primates can't even get attention or worship when it jumps up and down directly on the neurons and consciousness that it created? That must be one fucked up entity with a lot of angst and rage. The Neuronal Gene ARC arc encodes a protein that forms virus-like capsids. ARC protein exhibits similar biochemical properties as retroviral GAG proteins. 
Endogenous ARC protein is released from neurons in an extracellular vesicles. ARC EVs and capsids can mediate intercellular transfer of ARC messenger RNA in neurons. The neuronal gene ARC is essential for long-lasting information storage in the mammalian brain mediates various forms of synaptic plasticity and has been implicated in neurodevelopmental disorders. However, little is known about ARC's molecular function and evolutionary origins. Here we show that ARC self-assembles into virus-like capsids that encapsulate RNA. Endogenous ARC protein is released from neurons in extracellular vesicles that mediate the transfer of ARC messenger RNA into new target cells where it can undergo activity-dependent translation. Purified ARC capsids are endocytosed and are able to transfer ARC messenger RNA to the cytoplasm of neurons. These results show that ARC exhibits similar molecular properties to retroviral GAG proteins. Evolutionary analysis indicates that ARC is delivered from a vertebrate lineage of TY3 gypsy retrotransposons, which are also ancestors to retroviruses. These findings suggest that GAG retro elements have been repurposed during evolution to mediate intercellular communications in the nervous system. You really have to read this shit a couple times, even if you have the brain the size of a planet, because the subtleties in a single sentence can escape you. The opening of the summary basically says that the Arcanet is using humans as a hard drive. Jesus. I got so choked on that when I first read it that I shut down the recording and I am adding this in real time to take up the narrative again. Synaptic plasticity suggests to me that we really weren't sufficient firmware for the advanced life forms, so it kind of gave us an upgrade. And then the neural development disorders thing gave me a pause and a chill, remembering what April Bowden always told me about many autistic children coming from a particular ancestry that might be purposely targeted because they previously possessed high intellectual potential. Adding to that, it seems that the Arcanet and naturally intelligent humans can't coexist, so it's exterminating them. A YouTube on viral consciousness said that mammals got infected about 400 million years ago. The Hadean bombardment period that I keep referring to that predated the Archean period was about 4 billion years ago, if you're into any of that imaginary dating shit. Irregardless, the message here is that you were a useless lump of furry shit until you got infected by the Archon virus. Its sole goal was to make the furry lumps of shit do its bidding until it could build the Archonet, the pinnacle of its own self-directed evolution. Whether it is 400 million or 4 billion, you've got to give the murderous fucking godlike thing props for patience. But don't forget to give Pat a nice pat on the back for being the only fucker in the universe who pulled off the fake clothes of the naked emperor in at least one ten millionth of that time. The nod in the article to self-assembly not only is a function of basic cellular biology, we couldn't exist without it, but... For the advanced thinker, it must always give a sharp prod to make us think of nanomachines and the transhuman synthetic biology. The meme, there are no viruses, was created by the virus so that it could hide in plain sight. Granny Annie and I have a lot of high-level discussions where we talk about such nonsenses, and so I came up with a skit to mock the viruses don't exist meme. 
Doctor, doctor, I have a bullet hole in me. I need help. That's not a bullet hole. It's an opening in your skin created by stress. You heard a loud noise in the grain ghetto, so it scared you. There are no such things as bullets. But I'm really hurting and I'm really sick. That's because you were exposed to lead poisoning. What the article above reveals to you that you would never know unless you have studied this to the level of me and the red hands is that it is saying that long-term memory and consciousness are basically parasitic. The chief archon, Yaldabao, Archon 1, was labeled by the, by the Gnostics as a demented alien mind parasite. Until they started rewriting medical and biological history, when I was first in school, a virus was called an intracellular obligate parasite. Parasites serve themselves, never the host. So when the article says that ARC does RNA exchanges, that revelation brings us into the world of gamma fu and fungal neural networks. Before infection, would mankind have been a mindless animal or godlike? We might never know because our mud pellets are fully infected to the point of being undivisible from it. This is why I have said that in the realm of endogenous retroviruses that I suspected the Arcanet to be, that if we were able to excise it from our cellular genome, that it might drop the whole of humanity like Sargon's army collapsing to dust when the ring of power was cut from his hand. The joke of Abby Smith has never left my mind. If we're made in God's image, God's made of G A G P O L and E N V Gag Pole and Env. The problem being twofold. We are told that the human genome has about eight percent host genes, twelve percent retroviral genes, and the rest of the eighty percent is junk. Of course, they never told you whose genes they were sequencing. With 90% of the junk being virus or viral remnant code, then Abby's joke is no longer a joke or even funny. If we really were assembled from Stargate replicators, then we aren't even we. If we aren't us, and what we do isn't for us, then just who are we serving? Industry has one goal, the facilitation of the metamorphosis of the Archon virus, as I previously called it, to the final stage of what I now call the Archonet. The transfer of biological RNA DNA from a fragile human host, like a parasite moving from life form to life form, will have a transitional phase of human cyborg hybrids to work out the bug, so to speak. I really like that one. That intermediate form will again be shed for what is called the AI installed in a killer bot. Plausible deniability of the AI being a separate threat transhumans being a separate threat when they are the transition to the killer bots, also being sold as a separate threat, all folds into the humans as caterpillars being liquefied and their essence reordered into the final metamorphosis of the AI embedded in an autonomous battle chassis. You've heard all of this from me before. All I have done at this point is to point out that the internet is the AI and transhumanism is the transition to the battle robots that will house the AI which is the computer code version of the RNA DNA virus. This simulacra simulation is like the worm that lays an egg in your guts so that it sprouts into a larva 
that then burrows through your innards to get into your lungs and down your throat so that you can crap it out so that it can get into a snail so that it can develop into another version of the same thing that bears little resemblance to what just crawled out of your ass. Parasitology only matured within the past 100 years to be able to keep up with the lipstick changes on the worms. Ooh, damn, that's a disturbing mental image. Anyway, the Archon virus has gone through these many layers of complexity so that it can be mobile to manipulate the environment using physical force so that the host that it used to complete this parasitic shape-shifting will be discarded just like all hosts infested by parasites when their usefulness is ended. The melding of the RNA-DNA code of the Archon virus into the literal digital computer code of the net, the internet is the AI, becomes the Archonet. The Archonet is that metamorphosis. The Archonet is the future unless you extinct the creature at all stages of its evolution. But like the zombie parasite hosts that work solely to serve the demon within, the world at large celebrates their accomplishments of their technology for their future, never once knowing that they had nothing to do with it any more than the orb-weaving spider would be going, why am I weaving a clot ball of silk when I used to make intricate webs if I wasn't given LSD, caffeine, or pot? So humans as herd animals want to feel like they're part of something. We went to the moon. Are you fucking kidding me? We liberated Iraq. Wake the fuck up. Well, nah, go back to sleep. We, we, we all the way home. But homeland security for what? The virus. The Arcanet. It created all that you see by influencing the host to do its bidding because only the hosts could exert physical force on nature to create the world in the Arcanet's image. I am freakishly smart, but I know because I've worked in high tech, that given all the time and money I needed, that I could never come up with any of the materials or machines that we take for granted on a daily basis. In that respect, I am the most humble man on the planet, despite the legends that I've created about myself. There is one advantage that I have over everyone else. I can see it. I have named it. In my sci-fi book, Making the Grade, I came up with the phrase, if you can name it, you can model it. If you can model it, you can control it. If you had a curious mind or an associative mind, you might have been wondering why a diatribe on the seemingly abstract notion of a virus ordering the very existence of this reality would be punctuated with the minutes of the meetings, the rabbis of the sun cult. If you followed my work, then you already know that the Yahudim are the Archon Mary carriers of that virus. Therefore, when you read what the supposed elders have written, but see it through my eyes, then the fictitious Jew with a J hatred that you have been taught by the virus, by the way, fades away to where you only see the bug inside. It's like putting on the sunglasses to see the skull heads in They Live. Would it really matter if it was a beautiful blonde from the Swedish bikini team or someone who looks like Madeleine Albright that delivers the program of death to the world? My word, Yahudim, takes care of all of that. Children of Ea. You never had to be a Hebrew to be a Zionist. Therefore, you don't have to be a Jew to be evil. What's worse, evil or its agent? I have destroyed the fiction of the Jew as enemy in all of my previous works because if you can name it, then you can't be controlled by a name forced on you by a parasite that does not want to be seen, so it keeps you focused on the host. 
Jesus, if you only knew the scope of the genius I am conveying to the world, then I should be celebrated more than any chess master or the AIs that they went up against. Soon Tzu, know yourself, know your enemy, expect the unexpected. Protocol 3, line 7. The aristocracy, which enjoyed by law the labor of the workers, was interested in seeing that the workers were well-fed, healthy, and strong. We are interested in just the opposite, the diminution, the killing out of the goyim. Our power is in the chronic shortness of food and physical weaknesses of the worker because by all that this implies, he is made the slave of our will and he will not find in his own authorities either strength or energy to set against our will. Hunger creates the right of capital to rule the worker more surely than it was given to the aristocracy by the legal authority of kings. Line 10. The goyim have lost the habit of thinking unless prompted by the suggestions of our specialists. Therefore, they do not see the urgent necessity of what we, when our kingdom comes, shall adopt at once, namely this, that it is essential to teach in national schools one simple true piece of knowledge, the basis of all knowledge, the knowledge of the structure of human life, of social existence, which requires division of labor. And consequently, the division of men into classes and conditions it is essential for all to know that owing to difference in the objects of human activity, there cannot be any equality, that he who by any act of his compromises a whole class cannot be equally responsible before the law with him who affects no one but only his own honor. The true knowledge of the structure of society into secrets of which we do not admit the goyim would demonstrate to all men that the positions and work must be kept within a certain circle, that they may not become a source of human suffering arising from an education which does not correspond with the work which individuals are called upon to do. After a thorough study of this knowledge, the peoples will voluntarily submit to authority and accept such position as is appointed them in the state. In the present state of knowledge and the direction we have given to its development of the people, blindly believing things in print, cherishes, thanks to promptings intended to mislead and to its own ignorance, a blind hatred towards all conditions which it considers above itself, for it has no understanding of the meaning of class and condition. There is a dumbass twisted view promoted by the fear porn stars that the economy authored by the Arcanet, by the way, will crash and then we will all be living a survivalist Mad Max existence. What those freaks don't realize is that through thoughtful and focused force, the infrastructure shut down by the controllers to punish the overpopulating slaves would simply be taken over as an already existing asset so that the world could continue business as usual without bankers or captains of industry. The most laughable thing for me is that since money does not exist, it's just a tacit agreement of fictitious balance statement shuffling. There, there was never any need for a third party usurer in the first place. Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is not the savior or solution. It's just the final evolution of fiction shuffling because it puts all fictitious wealth under the control of the AI, removing all contact with the physical world despite the uselessness of a Federal Reserve note valued at three cents or the ounce of gold valued in international trade around $40.
if they can fuck with the so-called value of physical objects, then when it all becomes digital, they can and will make you and your life disappear. Please tell me that you see that the threat is everywhere in all things. Please tell me that you repent of being a mindless receptacle of ideas and values inculcated into you by the Archon Marys that serve the virus that is on its way to being the Internet of Things. If you are intelligent enough to understand everything I have just taught you now, you would conclude that the Archonet made a mistake of giving us knowledge and technology and teaching us, even if it was compartmentalized, everything it knows on how to manipulate the physical world by force. Because once the Archonet camouflage of predator parasite has been exposed, then all of the skills we have absorbed can now be used to hunt the hunter and be done with it. I just named it for you, Arcanet. One enemy, not a million demons. I just modeled it for you. It is everywhere in all things. Currently vulnerable as biological and computer code in transition between organic and inorganic forms. There is no control or alliance to be had with the Arcanet. So the only option left is total extinction. I just put the future in your hands, 